Good evening, folks. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is a first. This is, uh, this is not Radio Fremantle. This is uh, Radio AH. This is Radio Abundant Hope. This is something uh, a little different and very special. I'm sitting here talking today to, uh, well, I'd like to say a very good friend of mine. And uh, I'm, I'm so delighted and excited that he's agreed to do this, this crazy thing. And uh, his name is Kibo Dobby. A lot of you folks out there listening on this particular AH radio channel will be familiar with his work. He's, uh, he's quite a prolific writer. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's a bit of a spiritual junkie. And uh, he's, he's, he's agreed to sit down with me today. Kibo, are you hearing me on the other end? Yeah. <laughs> you are. Fantastic. You're hearing me loud and clear. How, yeah, are, yeah. how are you today, man? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, a, that's a start, it's been right? Crazy, yeah. <laughs> that's an important beginning, and a lot of people don't get that far, so we're, we're already up on a lot of people. Now, um, I want to just start today, if I can. I, I'm just going to intro it like this, basically with something that I found on your website, kibodabi.wordpress.com. Um, uh, the blog. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the blog. That's the one where you do a lot of your fine work. And I wanted to just mention this one today. Um, it, it's called I Saw This Today. It's posted on 29 August. It's one of the most recent. I think it is the most recent uh, something that you put on there. I'm just going to read it. It's, it's brief, but I want to read it. Um, it goes like this. I take the train every day from one end of Chicago to the other. This morning, down on the sidewalk, upside down from my point of view, and written in several colors was this. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. Please help spread the word. Thanks, Kibo. Okay. Beautiful. Tell me about this. You're on the train. You saw this, this thing. What, what, what's so special about this, Kibo? What, what was it about poignant about this thing that you wanted to, uh, you wanted to mention it on your blog? Well, I, I, well, one, I'm glad I learned how to read upside down. Uh, <laughs> somebody, it wasn't there the day before that I can tell, but somebody <laughs> took the time to write in beautiful colors something that they thought would be helpful. What gets to me later is, I, I think Steve brought it up, that it was from another work, and it was only a part of that work, and actually it was more about God and what he was trying to say, then the person who wrote it on the sidewalk was willing to put it down. He, 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 basically what he did was he took a part of it that he resonated with, that he felt everybody should be able to resonate with, whether they believe in God or not. He didn't, either he didn't want to take that chance or he didn't believe it or he just wanted that. But he put that down there. But the whole message of, well, I mean, this is the truth. Shit will happen to you. Good shit and bad shit will happen to you. Do not be afraid. And this is what we've been trying to get you know people to understand. There's nothing to fear. Fear is an illusion. There is nothing to fear. Do not fear. Right. So for, for them to take the time to write that out in such a way where it actually got the exposure, not just from people walking by on the sidewalk, but from idiots like me who see it from the train. And I just felt that if they were willing to go through all that trouble, the least I could do was help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. you, it's true, man. I mean, beautiful and terrible things happen. And, uh, you know, depending if you're a half, uh, a glass half full or a glass half empty type, you might say there's more terrible than beautiful things right now. And there's a lot of fear around that. You know, <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on that we don't understand. There's a lot going on that we haven't quite learned how to... Um, you know, make sense of, and uh, it's scaring a lot of people. So I think uh, I think the fear thing is uh, definitely still riding high on the waves and um, affecting everybody's lives. But I mean, how do we uh, how do we get rid of this fear thing? How do we do it? I mean, I, I know we gotta. I know we gotta. I, I think I, I think a lot of the fear thing is the unknown, right? It's basically the unknown. That's where it all stems from. I, I, I don't. I don't. Uh... You could say it's unknown. I know people who are afraid of the known. They know 
They know what they're afraid of. They're afraid of losing their houses. They're afraid of being homeless. They're afraid of getting shot in the street. They're afraid of car crashes. They're afraid of their loved ones lose, you know, leaving them. They're, they're afraid of this. They're afraid of that. Uh, it, hell, you have time to be afraid of the unknown. <laughs> you know, you you're afraid of the next president. You're afraid of the one you got now. You're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you you're afraid. You're afraid because they give you all this stuff and tell you and give you reasons to be afraid and that keeps you unbalanced and that keeps you easy to control. Why does that keep you easy to be controlled because in my eyes anyway you are all of that stuff is the perception of material things you are afraid of a material experience that will cause you pain on whatever level that it causes you pain it will either cause you physical pain mental pain or emotional pain, pain sucks, I do, well it, that depends on how you look at yourself if you look at yourself as a physical creature then you will be afraid of physical things if you look at yourself as a spiritual creature physical things become nothing but an experience and with training and understanding and walking in God and God walking in you you come to understand that this is all just experience it's just one life you can do this there is actually nothing to be afraid of because you were created as a forever thing and all of this pain and fear and everything is simply a material illusion for the sake of experience and demonstration. And it is up to you to recognize your true self as a spiritual being and understand that this is nothing. What have you to be afraid of? You are a forever creature. You are one in the consciousness of a creator who is actually you. You cannot die. That pain is a perception of pain. Yeah, you can train. Yeah. You can you can train yourself to go beyond the pain physically. I mean, there are guys out there. You know, you you got those black op guys who can just hold their hand over the flame, and it's nothing. Why they train themselves in, perce in in perception? They have no fear of this. They've trained themselves not to fear that. Hell, some of them even like it. But that's besides the point. The thing is. It's just a material thing. In consciousness and perception, you can get over that. You can go through anything. You'd be surprised what you can go through. And once you get there, you go, well, shit, that was nothing. Yeah. I live yeah. to tell the tale. And all that fear that you had in that is you're like, well, why was I so damn afraid? I don't know. I, but I, I, I was afraid of it before I went to it. And then when I went to it, I realized this is nothing. It's, you know, really, what am I about that I was afraid of that? Who am I counting? Where, where, where does all, what is it? You are taught to be afraid. And you were taught to be afraid for specific reasons. And in order to keep you afraid, they keep throwing shit at you to make you afraid. And as long as you believe in that fear, you will be subject to it. I understand how hard it is to get over that fear. I have 55 years and I've just gotten to the point where, you know what, screw it. For two months, they had an angel behind my back, like, like that guy who would tell the Roman general, you were just a man, you were just a man. Because he'd come home and everybody would be cheering him like, you know, he was all that. And he had, he had somebody behind him whispering in his ear to remind him that he wasn't. So they sent me somebody who would just whisper in my ear all the time, there is nothing to fear. Fear is an illusion. Fear is nothing. There is nothing to fear. Fear is an illusion. It has no meaning. Tell that to yourself for two or three months, every moment of your life. And see if you give a shit about fear anymore. What are you afraid of? Pain? Big deal. Well, how long does pain last? Death? Ooh, wow. When you wake up from that, you'll realize it was nothing. Losing this, losing that, uh, loss is part of life. You learn from it. Okay, you don't like it, but okay, I'm still here. The things you fear are the things you give yourself because you acted from a position of fear. You let that fear color your actions because you were afraid. You know, if you stop being afraid and realize, you know, it's just shit. We go through shit all the time. I was afraid of shit when I was a kid, like on that high diving board. But I jumped. 
After that, I was up there five times a day when I went to the pool. But I was afraid of the high diving board until I got up on the high diving board and jumped off the high diving board. I wasn't trying to do anything fancy, you know, 33 and a half split, reverse turnover. No, I was happy <laughs> in the right direction. But I went off the board. Nothing. What was I afraid of? It seemed so high. Why? Because it was a perception thing. Shit's going to happen. Don't be afraid. Because at the end of the day, when it's all over, it's just lessons learned, man. You're here on the planet where... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there are people who were afraid to come to this freaking planet. Look at where you are. You had the courage to come here. You're going to be afraid of this shit? You're going to let them beat you like that? Hell no. <laughs> Learn. Learn to look them in the face and go... I ain't afraid of you, you piece of... But you're just doing your job. I understand. Now leave me alone. Yeah. What do you, what do you got to be afraid of? Shit's going to happen whether you're afraid of it or not. So why be afraid? If it happens, it happens. It happens. It happens for a reason. It has a purpose. Get through it. Yeah. Well, man, it makes sense. But uh, I still, I, I got to tell you, it's it's still most of the, the driving factors on this planet is fear. And you told me the other day, we had this conversation uh, a couple of days ago. You were talking to me. You're, you're a positive guy. And, uh, I'm you know, a what? You, you seem to be, to me, a positive guy. I'm serious, man. You came across real positive. I, I, I said to you, I said to you that it was it was hard to pull ourselves out. We need we need a lot of help. You remember that I said that we need a lot of help. But I've learned to be a positive guy because I have experienced that help. Okay. I, okay. I am still in this house where you're speaking to me now because of that help. A year ago, when I, was, I woke up every morning going, ah! I mean, that's how I woke up in the morning. You talk about fear. I was one fearful motherfucker. Yeah. I'm going to look this. I'm going I'm to see that. And when it was all over, I said, shit, how the hell did that happen? Somebody said this. They sent me that. This happened. That happened. And God bless them for it. But the fact that the whole thing was there in the first place, how long ago? And Harold, hi, Harold. God bless you. I love you. For somebody, how many years ago did that happen? And then, and I do, and from what, how? Huh? That can only come from one direction. If I am walking in alignment and attunement in God, and God is walking in me, and I can learn to rest in that and walk without fear, what have I to fear? What the hell can man do to me? I had to learn that. And it was a hard-ass lesson to learn. Yeah, I mean, you know, I should be freaking out now. I'm not. My five-year mortgage is up on the 28th of this month. I don't have the money. I can get kicked out of my house by October. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to be done. I have no idea if I'm going to be here or not. All I know is that for some strange reason, I have no fear of the situation because I'm looking at something bigger. And I'm trusting in that. And I know whatever is supposed to be here or somewhere else, whatever happens, as long as it's God's will, I don't care. As long as I am doing God's will, as long as I am where God wants me to be, and I know that, I'm good. So God's, I got no <laughs> God's, God's will can be, you know, your ass out on the street. Can that be God's will as well? Yes. And you're going to be fine with that? Yeah, I have to be. I mean, that's rough, man. What type of God does that, man? Well, let's see. Um, see, that's the problem. That's the problem. You're saying well, that the terrible shit happens and that we should be okay with that. And we should be willing to deal the cards we're dealt and still realize that it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. But the problem we got is people are getting their ass kicked out of their homes. People are getting their children taken away. There are, there are bombs going off. There are drones in the sky. There are some crazy shit out there. And people are asking the question, what the hell is God doing? 
God is waiting for us to do His will. Okay, okay, let me get this right. So, <laughs> the the stuff that's going down, that, you know, there's a lot of pain out there, and you, I told, you've been telling us now that the pain is nothing to fear, you got nothing to fear of the pain. Fine, you got nothing to fear, fear of the pain, and this stuff that's happening, well, if the pain's not important, if the pain doesn't mean anything. I didn't say it wasn't important. I didn't say it didn't mean anything. I said don't fear it. Don't fear it. Okay, okay. All right. So it's important. It has purpose, but not necessarily just to cause us grief and anguish. Can you, will you accept that statement? You can be in grief. You can be in anguish. Don't fear it. Okay. All right. But the thing is, we got this stuff going down. And people are screaming now, screaming more than ever, where the hell is God? Apparently not enough people are screaming, are they? Well, because they, they are still picking up their guns to go to fight. They are still at the Republican convention. They are still at the Democratic convention. They are still waging jihad. They are still pointing guns at each other. And they are still doing the stuff that they are complaining about. They are still hating their neighbors. Okay, they are still listening to the lies. They are wondering why they are in the bed of their own making. And they are complaining about it. Because they have done as they have want to do. They have put their wills ahead of God's will. They have put their hatred of each other in front of God and loving each other. They have not loved the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul. And they have not loved thy neighbors as thyself. They do not love each other as each other. They do not recognize themselves in God. They are living the lie. And because they are living the lie, they are feeling the effects of the lie. And that is on them. And they can complain all they want, but it's their own fault. When they put down the gun, when they tell the cabal, fuck you and your money. When they stand up as one and they look to God and they see God within them. And as one people, they join hands and they say, you know what, God, your will be done. Whatever it may be. Let us fulfill it in ourselves. We are complaining because we are experiencing the effects of our own wills. That is what free will is all about. We have chosen our will. We are looking at everything from our perspective. We are not looking at it from God's perspective. And I know that is a hard thing to do for an ascending creature, but it can be done. They are not listening they have not heard. They are not realizing. They are letting their differences come between them, which I understand. It's a human thing to do. But all, all of this, well, this shit, yes, I know all this shit is going on, but what are we doing about it? We are telling people, oh, visualize the new world. Hell, visualize making the new world. Visualize no war. Visualize making no war. Visualize people putting down their guns. Visualize kids not joining the military because they don't have anywhere to go. Make it possible for them to have somewhere else to go. Make it possible for these kids out here on the street to have something to do other than run around and sell crack and shoot each other. You don't like the educational system? Get your kids out of it and teach them something real. You want God to take care of you like you're a baby, or do you want to stand up like a spiritual adult on your own two feet and say, damn it, Dad, I'm with you. I'm sick of this shit. And I know you are too. But we still do it. We let ourselves be lied to. We like the lie. Tell me those lies. Make me a happy man. I got light workers everywhere now signing up on, on signing forms for Cobra because Cobra said that they were going to give them money because they know they were poor, put upon light workers. And now he's going to go around and give speeches so they can find out what these people who signed up look like. The Galactic Federation is going to show its ship if it looks like Obama's going to have a hard time being reelected. But if it looks like he's going to win and everything's going to be fine, we'll show up after the election. This is what they just put out. I don't understand it. But this is what people do. They want to be told this. They want to believe that. They're not, they're not in themselves. This is what they want to hear. They want somebody to come and save them. I understand. Hell, I want somebody to come and save me too, but I, I have to earn it. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. What are we going to do?
What do we got to do to earn it, man? What do we got to do to earn it? I, I'm sure everybody wants to earn it right now. I mean, they don't know what exactly they want to earn, but they know that they got to earn something because what, what they're getting right now is not a whole lot. Do what you were told to do. Man, but we don't have anyone telling us to, to do anything. All we have is our work. The words have been there for 2,000 years. That word hasn't changed. They could not keep it out of the books. The word was there. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul, thy mind and strength. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you can do that, the master told you the kingdom of God is within you. Go walk through the kingdom. It is within you. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to the channels. All the people saying anything, you know what? It's in you. Sit down, turn everything else off, and give yourself completely to the one who made you. Because he is in you. He is you. You think you are somebody. You are God being you. It is time you recognize that and act it accordingly. If we could do that, we wouldn't have any of this shit. But we want it to be ruled by men and God led us. Now, what do we have? And that which I do, ye may also do, and more. The, the, the hills will skip like little lambs for you. Why? Know ye not ye are gods? Why can you not act like gods? That is what you are. Ye are gods, learning to be gods. I don't feel like a god, man. Who does? It doesn't matter. When you get to the point where you are making your own creation and administrating and maintaining your creation, your universe, making it perfect, you will have a definite feeling for the charges that you created. You will know them. You will know what you were sending them through because you have been there. And they will have to go through the same shit. There is no other way. Everything cannot be rainbows and unicorns and lollipops. It would be nice, but you will be weak. You have to have something to strive for. There must be a challenge. There must be something to prove your resolve in the face of, of all aridity. To find peace in war, love in the face of all chaos and hatred, light in the darkness. And that's in you. You shine with that light. You want people to change? You can't change people. Change yourself. Be that light. Be that light out on the street. Be that light in action. Do the things that light does. Do the things that God does in you. And other people will see you and go, damn. And they're going to want to be like you. And it will grow. We treat each other with respect. We are excellent to each other. We pick up trash off the street. We feed the homeless. We, we offer hugs to little children when they are crying. We return things that others have lost. We do not steal. <laughs> we do not cheat. We do not take advantage of each other. We live the life of God. And you let that grow because more people are doing it, because you're doing it, and the people who see you want to be like you. Because you want to be like God, and God gives it to you to do so. Because if you could just open yourself up to God and realize that you actually are God, you are a character of God. Be an actor now. Act like God. Let God walk in you and know you walk in God. You are the same being. He's just you. He's being you. He is his, you are his idea of you. And he has let you go your own way. Because he knows eventually you'll figure it out one way or the other. You can do it this age or the next age, maybe even the age after. It's time is nothing. One life is nothing. And we go through all this shit and we scream and shout and yes, we are hurt and we don't like it. There's a lot of crap I don't like. But you know what? I know where it goes. It's just one life I can do this. And I, you know, I, we had, I had some 
two blocks away from me, people got shot down. We heard the shots getting closer. And I know, I know, I know. And I, I, what can I do? All I can do is the best I can do and try to be more light in the darkness. That's all I can do. I can't change their mind. Well, am I going to tell some grand gangbanger he can't do what he's doing because he's making more money in a week than I can in a month? What am I supposed to tell him? He's got his life that he believes in. Well, I'm going to tell him about God. What has God done for him lately? He doesn't know. He doesn't care. God don't pay him money. <laughs> it, it, <it's, laughs> you know, God don't get me women. God don't get me bling. God don't get me a new car. God don't pay the bill. Well, actually, yes, he does, but not if you're going to be like this. Doesn't seem like God's really into the stuff that we're into. Actually, yes, he is, but it's a matter of energetics. Mm. You, have, you, have, you, have, you have to understand who and what you are. You have to understand that actually, yes, you are God in action. And if you were willing to have that relationship with God, being one with God, and to listen, I mean, really develop hearing, which is one of the hardest things to do because there's so much in the way. And I, I have to worry constantly about what I'm filtering. Um, you want to you, you wanna get to the core of it without hindrance. You want to do it without anything in the way. And if you can get to that point, and, and it, it's, it's not easy. But the thing is, you're trying. And that's really what matters. You're trying. People die trying. And because they die trying, they're much better off in between and in the next life. I mean, really, it means a lot. It means um, a lot to try? Yeah, trying is everything, man. So failure, there's no, there's no failure. It's just trying or not trying. There's no yeah. success and failure. So trying is success, is it? You get nothing without trying. The Book of Arantia tells you that. You, you, you talk about success or failure, you know, uh, like it, 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 and depending on what you think success or failure is, is this material success or failure, or is this spiritual success or failure? And if it's spiritual, well, I, uh, personally, personally, this is just me now. I, I think there's nothing but success as long as you try. However slow you may be on the path, I mean, I myself am crawling on all fours sometimes. <laughs> And uh, as long as I'm making progress, I don't care. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm going in leaps and bounds, and sometimes I feel like I'm just flat out on the ground, and the only thing I got going are my fingers. I feel you like know, that too, I man. I feel like that too, the crawling, you know. That's a really good way to put it. Sometimes it's crawling, and I think I'm supposed to be some kind of, you know, more yeah. advanced uh, individual than most, maybe. And, well, you know, I'm crawling, man. It's fingertips. It's nail-biting. Yeah, but I'm trying. I'm moving. It may, it may, I, I got turtles passing me by. But <laughs> I'm moving. Okay, and that's all that matters to me. This is me. I can't do nothing for nobody else. I got, you know, I got to get there. I can't get anybody else there. I can mark a, a rock along the way, and if somebody notices, that helps. But the fact that they're there to notice the rock means they're trying. I ain't telling nobody nothing new. And I ain't saving nobody. All I'm doing is giving my experiences, sharing, and praying to God that somewhere along the line, something I did helped. If I helped anybody, I'm grateful. But if I helped anybody, it's because I helped myself first. I got to be there in order to tell you where it is. Because I learned from the people who told me where it was. And that's how I got there. I got teachers. I got people along the way that I've known and loved, and they have helped me immensely to learn and to be where I am now. I wouldn't be here without them because we all shared. We did that. We were there for each other one way or another, whether we knew it or not or meant to or not. We were there for each other, just like the guy who wrote that thing on the sidewalk. We were there for each other. The people that you meet on the street, you were there for each other. You talk to them, you help them, they help you. You learn from everybody and everything. You learn from the wind, man. You got to take everything as a spiritual experience because that's what it is. It's a spiritual experience in consciousness of awareness for the sake of demonstration and experience. 
you are perfection becoming perfect. You are perfect becoming perfection. You wait, are wait, God. Wait. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Perfection coming perfect. That doesn't. Yep. Like, I don't. I don't get that one. How can you be you, perfect and and then be working towards perfection? If you're perfect, you, how? Why are you working? Because you have to understand what it means to be perfect. Yes. And we can find that here. You can find that anywhere. You can find that everywhere. You think this is your first life? You think this is your last life? This is all about you becoming perfect. Man, this place God. this place doesn't look perfect to me, man. So? I don't I I have to you look you have to look harder to see the perfection in this place. How do you fight a forest fire? Well, not with fire. Yeah, you ever heard of what? What do they call it? Because uh, I, I fought a fire uh, uh, once when I was in college. <laughs> we were watching Sound of Music, and they came to, "Hey, you want to fight a forest fire?" We're like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> so, no, no, it was just like that, you know. So we're out there with the shovel, and basically, basically what they did was because the fire was ahead of us, and they had burned something before the fire. And we were helping to put that secondary fire out. I forget what they call it, but what that does is it holds back the fire, the main fire, because what it do, it takes away what it has to burn. You can fight fire with fire, right? you know. You just, uh, perfection is hard to see from the inside. That's why you have to be able to look at it from the outside in. You have to look at the whole journey instead of just the step you're on. You have to be able to have the imagination to realize that this is just a small point in the total picture and that this what you consider to be imperfection is actually helping to make everything perfect because this will be over one day and when this is over the new thing begins and everybody goes ooh ah but it wouldn't be as great as it was if we hadn't gone to this shit and it had been much more glorious because we did and those of us that are staying here to help out are that much more glorious and courageous and stronger because we went through this shit. And we can teach others. And they can learn from us. And so perfection is added on to to become the perfection that it is in actuality. Right now, we're all potential. But we're creating an actual thing. And we're all in this together. We are, we are helping Christ Michael Aton in the growing of his creation into the perfection that it is meant to be. And in order to do that, there has to be an alternative. Everything can't be rainbows and unicorns. You got to go through shit to understand what shit is. And the only time you can stop shit is when you've been through shit. And after this shit, we'll never let this shit happen again. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs> gotta write that down <laughs> but, I mean come on we we, you know people tell me well, you should give yourself more credit in, in some ways yes in some ways no I recognize who and what I am and I allow myself small moments of appreciation just, you'll forgive me for this, but sometimes I do it just to entertain myself. <laughs> uh, before we started today, I had gotten dressed, I got my little thing, I got my interview clothes on. I said, I'm going to wear this, because this is nice, it's natural and everything. And I got up in front of my wife and I said, I am beautiful. <laughs> Gaze upon me and say. And she just looked at me and like, yeah, right. <laughs> I said, hey, hey, once a life, I am allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's okay to love yourself. You, yeah, okay, none of us are perfect. We got a long way to go, but damn it, appreciate how far you come. Okay, give yourself a little credit. Pat yourself on the back once in a while. Say to God, thanks for getting me here. And God will say, well, hell, you didn't have to work. Well, just thanks anyway. And he'll say thank you. Yeah. But that's a relationship. Okay? I keep telling you people, God is your father. God is your friend. God, <laughs> God is the guy who kicks it on the couch with you and talks to you while you watch TV. And if you really develop that relationship and you had that conversation all the time, you would be amazed. Because it's right there. I, I forgive me, you know, because like, this is where I am. This is what I do. This is what I have all the time. I have these constant conversations now. This is where I am. This, I, and you're watching TV and you're having this conversation. And, and, and they have to do it on your level. You know, if you raise yourself up, the conversation gets better. But basically, they can't go beyond what you can deal with. So, you know, you're sitting up on the watching the TV and something comes on. And you, you hear that celestial voice going, you really believe that shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you watch that? What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's something. Yeah, but I look, I know this is shit, but it's entertaining shit. As long as I know <laughs> shit, right? So, yeah, but there isn't anything better. I don't know. Let's check the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me and God. <laughs> that seems so casual, man. It is casual. That's what I'm trying to get people to see. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you know, you're, you're a celestial royalty. We're, the rest of us, you know, we're, we're shit kickers down here. But that is my understanding from an ascending point of view. You don't want to hear my understanding from a descending point of view. I don't know if we have the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All of, all of this is coming from what I consider to be the human part of me. I'm still trying to deal with that, you know, descending sun stuff. And, you know, I'm like, okay, I can deal with it, I can accept it, but I can't move a cornflake across the table. I don't, you know, the only thing that it, that it affords me that I can see that other people don't do is I am willing to look at things more from the standpoint of source and center. That's it. I mean, that might be the only advantage I have. And I don't think it's much of an advantage because I know other people do this too. Now, I don't think it's anything new. It's just it's something I do all the time. I, I, I think it's a mistake to just look at things from a human viewpoint. I think you have to look at things from the position of your God center. Because that's, that's, that's what you are. That's what you're here for. You're here to do God's will. Which means you have to see things from his point of view. All and see time. how that relates. Yeah, to see how that relates to your point of view. And how that works. And then you start seeing the nuances and like, why did I see that writing on the sidewalk? Why did it show up then? Why am I having this conversation with this person? How did it turn out that way? It's like I told you the other day, you know, I had a woman come up, come and talk to me and we had this whole energetic conversation simply because I threw trash in the trash can. And that made her look at me differently. She was no longer afraid of me. She saw something in common. So we had this wonderful conversation. But that was because of the conversations I have all the time. And the boss said, hey, why don't you do something for Mother Earth? Really? You want me to pick that up and put it in the trash? Yeah, okay. Boom, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, this woman comes and sits next to me. And, you know, it's a wonderful conversation. And we share, teach, learn. Great. We both, we have, we have both profited. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Well, you know, I, I think I think if we're all going to be talking to God like that on on that level, it's going to be a, a different picture for everybody. But He does right. that. He's He's willing to do that. He wants that. That's what He wants. He is that. He is that. You forget. You are God. You are a part of God. God is thinking of Himself. That thought is what we call creation. No, I, I, I get that, man. I get that. You know, I, I really do. No, by all you, means. Wouldn't you want to talk to your creation? I every don't know, you know. We're, we're not exactly the, the you know, the, the, the greatest. Cre well, I can't say that. That's, I don't even. How I, can you say that? I, I didn't say it, man. <laughs> it said, See, let me know. See, that's because you view yourself differently than what you really are. You are God being you. And if you appreciate that, nothing else matters. 
God is me. Okay. God, God, is, God, God is me. Look, God looks at you with the same love and appreciation that he created you with. You will always be that for him. He will always love you. He will always embrace you. He will always look at you and like and with that attitude of like, damn, I made something good. Look at this. Do you see what I made? And the angels go, yeah, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it great? Yeah, boss. Ain't it beautiful? Yeah, boss. Do you think it will ever talk to me? Don't know, boss. <laughs> But God, I love what I made. Yeah, boss. <laughs> oh, me, oh my, I love what I made. That's right. Boss. We love it too. I know. <laughs> Why can't you love yourself like God loves you? Why can't you appreciate yourself like God appreciates you? Why can't you see yourself through his eyes? Instead of putting yourself down and saying, oh, I'm this, I'm, I'm fucked up. Yeah, okay, you fucked up, but God knows why you fucked up. It's all part of the process. It's okay. You don't want to be fucked up anymore? Talk to the one who made you. He'll get you out of it. When you're ready, boom, there it is. But you got to want not to be fucked up anymore. Badly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, you really have to realize how fucked up you are to say, I don't want to be fucked up anymore. I said, God, I am too stupid to pick my own women, please. And that's how I got my wife now. Blessing. You know, nobody's going to put up with me and love me like she does. Nobody's going to understand. She is proof to me that God loves me. Why? Because I completely gave it over to God. I told God I am too stupid to live my life. Please help me out. And here I am. I know. And he has helped me appreciate myself from his standpoint. Because from my point of view, I'm just fucked up and don't know shit. How do I get over that? By, you know, taking the word of the one who created me. Well, you know, actually, you are pretty cool and beautiful, and I do love you. And, you know, I know you think you could do better and you want to do better, but divine timing is a process. You know, you got to appreciate it. Get the value of it. And, you know, just work with me. I'll get you there. Yeah, boss. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> so, so he's gonna do that right now. He'll he'll do that anytime we want. We just gotta want it bad enough, right? As long as you're sincere and you are willing to do the work, the work does not save you from pain. The work will test you. The work will send you to some shit. But at least you will understand why you were going through that shit. And if you really understand why you go through that shit, you'll appreciate it. And you'll be able to smile about it. And you'll be able to laugh about it. Because you know in whose hands you are. You know who you walk with. You know who you walk in. You know who walks in you. And you know that all of this shit don't mean shit. It's just a thing. And you're just doing what you're supposed to do as God sees fit. My shoe came off the other day. I'm walking around with my soul swapping. Now, I could have gotten pissed off and said, what the fuck? I had to laugh about it. Well, maybe some... <laughs> I said, maybe somebody will think I'm homeless and give me some money. <laughs> and I'm trying to, I'm trying to shuffle because I don't want it flopping too much. So I'm, I'm wa I don't know what I look like when I was walking. But I'm like, you know what? I know some, I'm going to find some duct tape. And sure enough, as long as, as long as they saw what I was doing, next thing I know, a perfect wire. Just long enough, not the breakable kind. It's like electric wire, you know, with the cloth thing. I, I, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it was right there in my path, like they put it there. And I tied it on the bottom of my sole and tied it to my shoe, and I was good for the rest of the day. I don't get mad at shit no more. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just a thing. It's a test. It's right? just. You, you, you are God, man. You are God being you. You are beautiful. God loves you. God made you. God, God wants you to understand what it is to be you. God wants you to understand that your experiences have meaning to the whole of the making of a perfect creation. That what you go through is not in vain. 
It all has a reason. It all has a purpose. And if you can just get through it with a loving heart and a, an understanding and an appreciation of what it is to be alive in God, then you wouldn't be pissed off. But they, 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 these evil fucks are running the world. I know. They ain't running the world. They're just running the system. Stop letting them run you. It'll be fine. It'll work out. But you have to think of yourself as a free will ascending being of faith. They can't touch you inside. They can't touch you when you walk with God. The energy that you create is against them all by itself. And that reduces them because they don't have that control over you anymore. Because you walk with one that control them. And they know it. God does not choose groups or nations or people. He chooses everybody. The ones that are chosen are the ones that choose God back. And that is an individual thing. It ain't about black or white or rich or poor or heterosexual or homosexual. It ain't about Catholic or Christian or Mormon or Jew or Islam or Buddhism or any of that. It is about the core of your being. It is about your unique personality that God gave you. God is your personality. Being you. God is making a perfect life for himself in you and when it's all over you're gonna appreciate the hell out of it because you went to some shit and when it's over you're gonna sit back and you're gonna relax you're gonna you know what this is so cool (laughs) (laughs) i am so freaking happy ain't the word for i just look at what i am look at what i know look at what i be look at what i do Yeah, hey, you made it. Now, I know what you're saying, but Kibo, that could be billions and billions of years from now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you're telling me that a little life of less than 100, than 100 years is fucking you up? I don't care how bad it is. You make it do this. It's like, it's like New York. This is the New York City of the universe, man. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> you can make it on Earth. You can make it anywhere. You came here because you said I could do it, and then you got here and you went, ah! Okay, that's all right. <laughs> Y'all did that. <laughs> I had no clue. It was tragic. <laughs> oh, God, no. Yeah, well, you're in it now. You're in it now. That's right. You're in it. You jumped yeah. out of the plane, the parachute, you know, you free fell. It looked nice from above, and then it got, you know, it got kind of murky as you got closer to the ground, and then you finally landed in a pile of dung. Nope. <laughs> And you said this you doesn't got, smell thank, so good. Thank God it was off. I know you landed this shit, but you're alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're alive. Now, here's the problem. Some people like it and shit. It's warm. It's soft. They haven't moved from the shit they landed in. You have. Okay. You people listening to UAH members, you people that are striving to be aware and get there, I I know, you know, I'm not satisfied with myself. Stop that shit. You're perfect. You're out of the shit, ain't you? You're out of that shit consciousness, aren't you? All right. You are working it. Okay. Quit putting yourself down. Quit telling, I can't, uh, yeah, well, we all feel that way. You know what? Fuck that. We are beautiful. Look at us. Look at us in our glory and sigh <laughs> at our magnificence. <laughs> we walk with God and God walks with us. Why? Because we like it. He likes it too. <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of, I, I just thought of something. I, I get a, you know, I get some people uh, contacting me in the radio show and one guy said to me, you know, I just don't know what's real anymore. 
I don't know where I don't know where to look. I don't know what to do. I I read AH. You know, I I, I talk about AH on the radio show, and people hear your interviews, and they get you know they get put on there, and that's great. That's really wonderful. You know, you talk about feeling good about something in my life. That one gives me so much joy to think that for a moment, you know, I might have had a small part to play in someone regaining a firmer identity about who they are and all these things. But he said, I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know if to believe you. I don't know what to believe them. I don't know, look anywhere. Go within. Work. The work is within. That's why the kingdom of God is within you. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a village idiot. Man, what does that mean, though, go within? You know, people don't, people look at you funny when you say that. You know, I, I say that, you know, but people just think I'm a crackpot. So, you know, go within. What, what do you mean by go within, Kiba? Because go within, there's a lot of organs, you know. Um, the only, there are no organs involved. <laughs> There are no organs involved in going within. Who goes within? You go within because you're a Michael son, and you could do that because you, you know, you worked at it. What, what about the newbies? What, how are they going within? They ain't got no guidance to go within. You are not your brain. Your mind is the mind of God. Start using it. You are a consciousness experience. Explore your consciousness. It is within. Figure out everything you've done, everything you're doing, the whys and wherefores. Reach out as far as you can to understand. Hold your hand out to God. Let God know you are holding your hand out to him. I guarantee you, you will feel his hand holding yours. It is within you. Like just ask. Um, just ask. Look. All you have to do is know who and what you are. If you can accept that, everything else will fall into place. But you cannot deviate from the knowledge of who and what you are because that's where you get in trouble. They weren't kidding when they said, human, know thyself. We don't know ourselves. We think we're what we see in the mirror. We think that we are flesh and blood and, and muscle and brain. And I know we are consciousness. We are energy. We are energetic. We are micro and macro. We are chemical and we are electrical. We are mechanical. We are quantum. We are the consciousness of God in action. That is what you are. It doesn't matter if you're descending or ascending. All of that is the same. It's just a step on the ladder. But it's all the same. There's only one of us here, and it ain't you or me or the people listening to this. There's only one of us here. You want to know what's real? That's real. The one is real. The one is the only real thing there is. Everything else is here because of the one. What is reality? You know how many realities there are? Think of every decision you've ever made throughout your life since the time that you were born and the decision that got you here. Okay, think how many decisions do you make a day? How many choices? If you have made any of those choices differently, you've created a new reality and that branches off into somewhere else. There are an infinite number of infinities. There are an infinite, infinite number of realities. What is reality, Papa? Papa is the only reality. You want reality? Go within. Because this shit out here ain't reality. It's made up. It is made up of shared consciousness experiences based on the causes and effects that we have placed into action. And all of those are the results of causes and effects that got us here in the first place, all going back to the original cause, which affected everything. God is that cause. That's why it's the plan. That's why it's perfect. That's why it's going to be the way he wants it to be. And no changing that. God wins. God wins because there is no other way. There is nothing else to be. There is nothing else to do. There is only God. All of this is for the, the sake of experience and demonstration. That we may learn what it is to be God. So that when that day comes, 
when we are perfect, even as our Father in the heavens is perfect, we will understand what it is to be perfect. You want to just be made perfect? You know what you you know what you would be doing right now if you were because there are people who were made perfect in personalities on on, on the paradise isle. You know what they're doing right now? They're listening to this broadcast. They're listening to this broadcast? Yes. Why? They, we- because they want to explore too. They're looking at it from the outside in. We're experiencing it from the inside out. Who's having a better time? Gee. The people on the roller coaster or the people watching the roller coaster? Well, roller coasters are cool. See? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, this roller coaster is unlike any other roller coaster. You find no theme park. This is, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is crazy out here. This is. You, but, you know, you don't know what crazy is. You're looking at (laughs) You you are looking at it from here. This is really right now. This is all you know. Now maybe after this life, you can put all those experiences together. Yeah, Earth was crazy, but you know it wasn't as crazy as that other place we were at. I mean, <laughs> oh man, that was some shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you know, if we hadn't have done that, we wouldn't have been able to go to Earth. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we got through that shit, so we got to come here. Yeah, but see, look, look we went through this shit. I mean, we got to Earth, so now what? I don't know, man. What do you want to do? Uh, is there anything harder? Well, I'm sure something will come. <laughs> Always something. Good thing. <laughs> <laughs> got to have something to do. <laughs> you think it's all just floating around going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I, barbecue. I, yeah. <laughs> Who the hell are you going to barbecue in heaven? Hmm? <laughs> you think the cows got heaven too, and you know, in cow heaven, there are no barbecues. No, no. So, what are we barbecuing? Yeah, please, really? <laughs> <laughs> chicken and beer. The chicken don't want to be fried chicken. No. 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 <laughs> We're talking, you know, hell, really? Uh, come on. <laughs> You got to have something to do. It's always work to be done. The making of perfection, I mean, think about it. You have the Paradise Isle, which is perfect. You have the hormonal worlds, which have been made perfect. You have the seven super universes. And in each of those seven super universes, you have... I don't know what, how many universes, and each of those universes has to be settled in light of life, and they have to be made perfect. And once all of those are perfect, then the super universe itself is settled in light and life, and that is made perfect. And how long would that take for all seven super universes to be settled in light and life, and then God just kind of puts it all together, and that's just another level of perfection, and there we are. And then there are now evolving universes around us in which we play the gods, and we do it our way. Hey, the thing about, the, the, the thing about creating universes is you have a template. You, you have a template in, in the Paradise Isle. So you were, you were creating as you have seen Papa create, and then we have an advantage because we have seen not only how Papa creates, but we've seen how Papa creates through uh, the Creator Sons, the Michael Sons, and their creations. And so, from the ideas that come to us in our lives here, that's another reason I like anime, because, you know, the whole of the human imagination is right. Oh, the ideas, God. And I, you know, the, you come up with, the, well, how do I want, yeah, well, can I make a universe in the shape of a cube? Can I make a universe in the shape of a rocking horse? <laughs> you know, how do I want my universe to be? How do I want... You know, because I know one day, you know, and don't think this is just a Michelson thing. Because you guys, you know, all of us, I'm, I'm an, I'm an ascending son here. I like this. You know, I'll probably do it with you guys. So I'm thinking of this from, you know, an ascending perspective. You know, well, okay, can, can, can I do one where there actually is magic, and you know, it's point that's kind of like blended with technology, but it's, you know, do, do I do the avatar thing? Because um, <laughs> I know 
that I know that's out there. There are people that can do this in this universe. You know, there are people that can raid houses with just a wave of their hand. They can you know, take mountains, move them over here, move them over there. You'd be surprised what people can do once they figure out how. But it's all consciousness. Okay. What you understand, it's like, what, what is it now, the three-minute mile? Yeah. Okay, remember when they said that was impossible? Remember when somebody finally broke the four-minute mile and then the next thing you knew, everybody was doing it? Now it's a three-minute mile. Yeah. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan came and he was, you know, he was taking the ball, going, hey, you know, <laughs> two hundred feet was hanging out, and, and inside for a year, everybody was freaking doing it. Um, we are an energetic quantum experience. No matter what you try to do, we share with each other, whether we like it or not. Now, if we shared more actively that which was positive and light-filled, this is why I say, know yourself. Know that you were God in action and be the actor. Okay? And your energy will spread. Other people will get it, and this thing will spread, and this will decrease the influence of the dark. Because you're putting yourself out there. You were putting your God energy out there. Don't visualize what's to come. Visualize it now. This, this is it. Don't visualize. Well, I mean, this is just me. I, I don't want to tell you, you know, because I think it's a good thing. You know, uh, what is it? John Small and Spirit Eagle. He said, visualize the new world. That's cool. Me, I would say, visualize making the new world. Visualize a world full of people that look at the bankers and tell them, you know what, forget you. We don't need your funny monopoly money. We reject you. You know, think of a world where, you know, visualize a world where right now, a minute ago, everybody said, you know what, screw this. We don't, we don't need Democrats or Republicans. We don't need the military. We don't, we, we don't need any of this. Okay, we, we, we don't need central banking. We don't need any of this cabal, Illuminati, whatever. Okay, whoever you people are, we reject you. We walk with God. God's will be done. On everybody. And the ones that are with it are with it, and the ones that ain't, oh well. We will love ourselves, we will love our God, and we will love each other. Period. And we will act like it. We will be excellent to each other at all times. And that will grow. That will spread. We've had delay, 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 delay because people don't realize they need the help. And people, you know, they don't realize the help that's available. They don't believe this and that. They don't believe in the Galactic Federation. They don't believe that God is right here. They don't believe in Christ Michael. They, they want to do it themselves, and this, they're still in it, and they think they got a better idea. And they think, well, you know, we, it's, you know it's like Fulford. <laughs> I love reading for Let me get this straight. You're going to give everything to the Chinese and let them run it, right? Like, that, that's really going to be any better right now. Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah. You know, okay, people are trying, but they all want to do it their way. I want to think, I want to think God. I, I, I want God's way. I want people to say, we want God's way. In fact, so many of us want God's way. We feel that God has no choice but to come down and say, okay, okay, you asked for me, here I am. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. I, I'm all for that one. Kibo, um, can we take a quick break? I don't want to take a quick break, but we got to do this for my for my recording here. We're going to take five minutes and we'll, we'll be back. You you hang on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, beautiful. We're going to take five minutes and then uh, we'll be back. Everyone, uh, thanks for listening. You, you stay tuned. We got more of Kibo uh, right after this. Okay, we're back, folks. We're, we're here again. This is Benjamin with you. Thanks again for uh, for tuning in. Um, I'm talking with Kibo now. We, we uh, we're talking too much. Actually, we spend more time talking off the off the interview set than we are on the interview set. We we got to start recording this stuff. So, Kibo, are you are you hearing me again? You, you're with me loud and clear. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay, now now I gotta I gotta hit some gritty stuff now. This is this is a, some history. I want to revisit some history. I want to get your your t- take on some history because I think uh, you know we again we we broached this subject the other day and. And you know, you you said some things to me that 
you know, I, I didn't consider quite in the same way. But, you know, I can, I can appreciate your point of view. We're going to talk about Short Lucy first. Can we do that? Short Lucy, I believe that's the, the phrase that you've coined because I have never seen that before. Short Lucy, you know what I'm referring to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We got to talk about it because it's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 it's been on my mind for quite a few years. And uh, anyone who knows anything about the rebellion, uh, you know, this guy's been a talking point around the universe of universes and uh you know there's a lot of review going on there's a huge amount of review about the the one they called Lucifer and uh we, we But Lucifer is not short Lucy. Oh oh it's not? No. Oh damn. I'm sorry. No. I, I want to talk short about Lucifer. Lucy. Short short Lucy are the idiots that are running around here oh. trying to keep things going. Oh, Your see, cabal I've leadership. Oh, I've messed up already. Okay. And, oh, the short, short, short Lucy is 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 nothing but a psychopathic, perverted human being that thinks he's sitting on top of the world and he thinks it's a mountain and he doesn't realize it's a toilet and it's about the plush of men. Okay, we'll get to that then. We'll get to that. <laughs> I, I apologize. I take that back. So, so we won't call him Short Lucy. We we we'll stick with Lucifer. I want to talk about that one. That guy. Okay. So, so you you mentioned the other. I I said to you, you know, I I was not impressed with his performance, and I was not happy in the in the, the things that you know he decided to do, and uh, you know take this rebellion because because we had an interview the other week. I I had those guys from the the UB Society there, the your, your anti book society, and they they were great. They took us through the whole the routine, you know, how it came about. He had these ideas which were not the same ideas. Um, that were kind of floating around uh, the traps, and and he said this is the way we're going to do it, and he was given free reign, uh, no pun intended, to do that, and uh, you know it didn't work out. And I said to him, that I was not, imp I said to you, I was not impressed. You know, look at look at this place, look at this job, look, this is this is the aftermath of the rebellion. We we got um, you know a, a planet in chaos, planets in chaos. This being one of the worst. But you said. You admired the guy. You said that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. What I said, because what you were asking was basically your idea of him was that he had been that way all along. And what I had reminded you of was that Lucifer was a bright and shining servant of Christ Michael Aton for millions of years before this happened. Okay, okay, we clarify that. All right, you, you, you got me on that one. He had, he had a very good reputation. You do not, you, he, 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 the rebellion was not that big because he just came up with this idea. Why do you think so many listen to him? I don't understand that either. Well, why do people here listen to Obama? Uh, well, because they, 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 he, he gives them hope for change. Okay. Now, let's say Obama started off. At, let, let, let's, let's pretend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's pretend that Obama started off as a great and wonderful president. He was, he, he, he was full of fairness and justice and he was going to make sure he, he was making sure that the money was spread out and the payments were made and everything that we light workers and lovers of God and people who wanted to see the new world come into the new way. He was everything that we actually hoped he would be. And we all celebrated Obama because he did exactly what we expected of him. And then in the second term, because we loved him so much, we voted him back in. Because he did everything that we wanted him to do. Okay? He told the bankers, fuck you. And they all went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> now you're dreaming. <laughs> okay? He told, he, he told Iran, you're not working on a bomb, right? He said, well, okay, look, if you are, get rid of it. We'll take care of Israel. We'll talk to them. We'll get everything straight. We'll free the Palestinians. We'll get rid of this boy. And he did it. Okay? Mm. 
And he let Gaddafi create an African union, and they got rid of all the warlords and the guns and, and all the slaves, and all the shit was, and the world was at peace, and everybody was happy, and there was prosperity, and everybody blamed Obama for that. And they were applauding him, man. And then in the second term, all of a sudden, Obama said, you know, this ain't working. You know what? We're going to go in a completely different direction. The way I got it figured, blah, 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 blah. And they would go with it because they had so much faith in him before. Lucifer was a damn good system lord. Okay? He had a good reputation. People believed in him. He shined brightly. He developed the wrong attitude. He had an attitude problem. His problem was, as far as I can tell, I could never really understand it. I never understood why he couldn't believe in Central Core. He, as far as I, I, I he, he should have. There was enough evidence. He didn't want to take the Michelson's word for it. He didn't want to take any words for it. I, I'm beginning to think he just did it because it was expedient and it was in his way. He could rebel against Christ Michael Aton, but he saw no way to rebel against Central Core. In order to have a rebellion, he needed to completely disregard Central Core in the first place. So he denied Papa. He denied the Paradise Trinity. He denied all of it. So that was step one. Step two was, and I honestly do believe that he was jealous. And I believe that jealousy came out of his ego because basically what he was looking at was a whole program set in place from some fuzzy, unknown being that the Michelsons were supporting of training the ascending faith sons and daughters of the realms of time and space for godhood. Technically, in his eyes, what was happening was these lowly, stupid creatures who are being sent through all kinds of shit so that they can learn what it is to be creators. And they're doing it the hard way, man. He said, well, why don't we go help them? No, that's not the way we're doing it. Well, you know, we could be with them. We could show them the way. Well, no, we need them to do this shit on their own. We can give them a little help, but we can't do it for them. You want to do it for them. But how would it say it'll work out? Just follow the plan. But let me get this straight, he said. When this is over, they're going to be greater than me? Let me get this straight. You're training them for the job I want. No. Well, how are you going to do that? To me. What do you mean, you? <laughs> yeah. And this is where shit went bad. So he worked up a plan and he took it to Christ Michael A. Time. And he said, How about this? This will work. And Christ Michael A. Time said, You can do everything but that. What do you mean? You can't do that. I can do that. No, you can't. You don't have that in you. You haven't gotten that far yet. If, 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 if what? <laughs> That's my job. That's Papa's job. You can't do that. You don't have it in you. Yes, I can. No, you can't. I'll prove it. Good luck. Tell you what, I'll give you a workshop. Then it was on. He felt that he could create creatures that could be perfect of their own free will and accord on their own by just being what they were. If he could control the whole thing and create souls, if he could give the gift of life to these people based on his image, then it would be good. 
because they would follow him and he would bring them along. And time after time after time, he failed. What is it, the anima, the animus? Yeah, they like Borg. He couldn't do it. Unfortunately, that set him over the edge. And uh, he, he, oh God, he, he was he's, <laughs> nothing. He no, 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 nothing. No talking to him. No talking to him at all. And you try to tell him, and, you, and he just. I don't. I. I. I uh, and everything just went to shit. I mean, talk about somebody literally going to hell within himself. And he just, if he had just followed the plan, if he had just understood, he would have realized that his time would come. And he would be a creator God himself. And he would have been a very good one, but he couldn't wait. He believed more in himself than he did in the divine. He believed more in himself than he did in his creator. He, he believed in himself. It's the same problem we're having here on earth. People believe in themselves. And if they can't believe in themselves, they find another human being to believe in. Do not make the same mistake that Lucifer did. Believe in God. Believe in the God that is within you. He rejected that. Don't do the same thing. All these people out here doing what they want to do because they feel that's the way, that's the Luciferian way. Do as thou wilt. And that's why you have all this shit out here because we have been allowed to feel the full effects of uh, our actions. Change our actions. How do we act? We act like the gods we are. You don't believe in yourself as much as you believe in God. If you believe in yourself, it is because you believe yourself to be part and parcel of God. And the only reason you are here is because of God. You want to have faith in something? Have faith in the one who made you. Dance with the one who brung you. <laughs> it's, it's a simple concept, but people don't want to do it because they want to have fun. That's all. They want to do what they want to do. Do what God wants you to do. And if you don't know, ask. And where do you ask? Ask within. Ask, ask, and keep asking. And if you don't know what to do, remember the rule. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, how are you going to treat the people around you? Be excellent to each other because you want people to be excellent to you. Like the golden rule, do one. I don't like the I don't like the phrasing of the golden rule because there are some people who like to get whacked up the rear end. There are people who like to get whipped. There are people who like torture and pain. This is what they grew up with. This is what they believe in. And so they treat other people this way because that's how they want to be treated. And that's all well and good, but that doesn't really work for the rest of us. No. Be excellent to each other. Love each other as God loves us. And see yourselves in each other because that's what you are. There's only one of us here, and it ain't you and me. Lucifer couldn't, he couldn't wait. He had no patience. It's a shame, really. I mean, I guess I get it. Kind of, sort of. I mean, you live so many millions of years. You're an eternal creature, really. And you watch all this stuff go by. You watch, you watch lowly, lowly creatures become finaliters. And you come to find out that they're going to be creating universes far ahead of you. You're not happy with that. You want to do it. You're raring, you're itching to go. He couldn't follow the plan. And because he couldn't follow the plan, 
He didn't want anybody else following the plan either. That's why he screwed with Adam and Eve so badly. But all of this was written, and Papa knew about it before the whole thing began, before creation was even created, he knew. When Christ Michael Aton had to go through this shit. That's his experience. We go through our shit. This is our experience. Everybody gets surprises. Everybody gets a script, and they wonder what's coming next. We go by Christ Michael Aton's script. Christ Michael Aton goes by Papa's script. So on and so forth, so forth, and so on. And we all get surprises. Makes life interesting. It's all right. Just one life. This universe will be settled in light and life. This universe will be made perfect, and we will all go out from here, and we will be the gods of the new universes. And the creatures that waited patiently and knew their place and knew what they were about, their time will come. And they will get upgraded, and they will be uplifted, and <laughs> it all becomes perfect. And then it keeps going, and there's more made, and that becomes perfect too. God is creating family and collecting it all together. You think about an infinite amount of infinite space, and you got it all and forever to work with. Always more and more, there is an infinite amount of infinite possibility to reality and what can be created. It never ends. And this is what we're doing. This is what we're a part of. It's beautiful. It's exciting. It's dangerous. It's, it's everything. We are experiencing everything. There's a glory and a beauty to that. If you appreciate it for what it is, nothing will disturb you. You will fear nothing because, hey, it's just great. Never a dull moment, man. <laughs> <laughs> So he had his time, and now he's gone, and there's no one in his name to carry on, so be it. The king is dead, no more kings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wondered as well, because it's, it's kind of scared me a little bit. Um, the fact that this guy was, you know, he was pretty high up, and as you said, he did his job well, he did it very well. The reason why he was doing what he was doing and why uh, Christ Michael Layton loved him so very much. Uh, but, you know. Christ Michael Layton loves everybody. Well, yeah, he does. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I understand that. St I stand corrected. Um, but, you know, how, how do you get that high up and still fall that far and hard? You know, you, you don't. I thought you didn't get that high up unless you understood the game. <laughs> Get high up. He was created for that. That was his job. That's what he did. That's what he. That's that's what he was. Yeah, but you think he started off as, you you think he started off as some kid somewhere in a crib sucking his thumb? No. That's what he was. That's what he was created as. And in his perfection, he was you think, created you think, to you, do what he did. What, you think he went to school for that? You, you what? You, <laughs> no, but you, you, you make my point, though. You say he was created for that. He was created to do what he did, and there were others like him in a similar role doing what he did. Mm -hmm. but, but then that, you know, oh, it kind of didn't work out. So was he created for that as well? You know, he, he on just. On some he, level, yes. And on, Christ Michael Aton didn't create him for that. You have to talk to Papa about that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, let, let's, look at, let's look at the whole picture and the guy who's responsible for everything, who knows everything before everything is everything, because everything is everything. And on some levels, he allows himself to be surprised because that's what he wants. And on some levels, he already knows this shit because that's what he wants. And nothing gets past him. Yeah. This, is all, this is all God thinking about himself being who and what he is and creating. It's God telling himself a story, a story of stories. This is God creating family. This is God creating friends. This is God creating living space. This is God creating experience. God wants to experience. I mean, really, what else is there to do? Not much. 
Well, I mean, would you just rather have that old that whole nebulous, you know, before thing? No, I the don't know. Yeah. Okay, see, so here we are. It's all experience. This is the Lucifer was not the first rebellion in the, in this universe. No, it was not the first universe to have a rebellion. No. Okay, but it was a big one. I mean, it's one for the books. But the ending, yeah, that's what counts. <laughs> you know, the other thing that doesn't fly well with me because that 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 whole thing of you know rebelling against God within my small but reasoning mind knowing that as you mentioned everything is all and god is everything and we are all that is which is he but how could that lucifer guy expect to get what he wanted when in the end there could only be one winner how could he separate from that which was himself you know i don't it's not logical it's not he believed in himself. But he knew that, well, surely he knew that he, he was that, that which he was, was created. He admitted that he was a creator. He admitted that he was, <laughs> he admitted, he was willing to admit that it was a creation of Christ Michael Layton. And he was, <laughs> he, he was willing to deal with that accordingly. But he completely rejected the paradise, the paradise trinity, and thus he 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 rejected prime source. He rejected he he rejected source core. He felt that the Michael sons were covering something up. That's what he said. Covering something up. He thought it was, he he thought that they were the ones running everything. He convinced himself of that. He thought he, he he thought it was a program. He decided he he decided within himself it was a scam and there was something that they weren't telling us. There's always something they're not telling us. Question is, do we really need to know? <laughs> yeah. So so the whole thing about someone above and beyond the Michael sons, he thought that was just that was a makeup. That was just, you know, false idols and the keep everyone in line kind of thing, but really there's nothing beyond that. Pretty much. He was willing to deal with what he could experience. But for some strange reason, he could not experience source. And that seemed to be a gift that was given to the humans. So you, you can see his dismay and frustration. Yeah, that had, that had hurt. Okay, I mean, you go work in an office and then have them have, them have you train somebody. And then find out that the person that you trained is getting the promotion that you wanted. Happens all the time. Here. How do you think that made him feel? He was pissed off. They tried to talk to him about it. They tried to explain it to him. He didn't want to go along with the plan. They told him, it'll be all right. Your turn will come. He didn't want to wait. He came up with an idea. They told him, it won't work. You'll get that far. And then, you know, you'll come across a huge block and you'll never get over it. He said, well, let me try. They said, okay. He could, not, he could not take failure. He was not willing to admit that he failed. And his reaction to that was just to fuck up everything he could. <laughs> yeah, he did that. I can't, it's like a little kid. If I can't have it, you can't have it either. Yeah. I, will, I will fuck up your action. Okay, good luck with that. Tell you what I'm going to do. You fuck up what you think you can fuck up. And then I'm going to show you just how good you made things in the end. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to create a people so strong that nobody in creation will be able to stand against them when it comes to light and life. And that's you. You want to complain about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that makes sense, man. That makes sense. I, I can, yeah. I, I, can I can go with that. I mean, I, I might, you know. Here we are. Here we are, huh? Here we are. And those of us 
the best and the brightest of us, the best and the brightest of the best and the brightest, know one thing. God's will be done. Because they know there's only one of us here. So it behooves them to act accordingly. Don't just be a character. Be an actor. Act accordingly. As that's what we are. We're acting right now, right? This whole thing well, too many, of us are characters. too many of us are characters and we're being acted upon. Okay, you, and we you don't have understand to, why. Yeah, you have to clarify we, that up. If we understood why and became the actors and became more proactive and interactive and so on and so forth, more cooperative, it wouldn't bother us so much. What's the difference but between be, actor and character then, Kibo? What's the difference? The reason, the difference between being a character and being an actor is the actor knows why. The actor knows why the character is going through what the character is going through. The character has no clue. It has no clue. Shit just happened to the character and the character is totally flabbergasted. Because the character never knows what's going to happen next. Okay. And the character goes, and the character goes through his shit as just a character and never understanding why. His time on stage is the way it is. So that's but most, the that's most of us, right? That that's pretty much you know majority of the people on this planet right now. Pretty much, yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah, but those who realize that they are divine beings playing a character, they have a different perspective. And perception and perspective is everything in this game. You have to have a more expanded, higher perception and perspective. If you're going to survive this, you have to look beyond the box. You have to look beyond the planet. We are very earth centric. We are very human centric. We look at everything from our perspective. We're like the Catholic church saying that the sun revolves around earth. And the moment somebody says, well, no, I figured out that the that earth revolves around the sun. Kill him. <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> Time is a stake, but 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 shut up! <laughs> How dare you? We are the center of creation. Damn it! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and people still think that way. They think what they're doing is what everybody is doing. People still think that other people react as they would react to a situation. Uh, Rachel Corey thought that she was dealing with people who had a certain amount of humanity. She, she was wrong. In America, you lie down under a bulldozer, they won't run over you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dealing with a completely different perception and perspective that was totally alien to her. And because she didn't understand, she died. Now, what that says about the people who did it, I'll leave that up to the individual. But she tried. There's that try thing again. She tried. She was a human being. And she showed what it was to be a human being. Maybe, just maybe, the other human beings will realize the folly of lying down all over the world so that they don't get bulldozed. And before you start thinking I'm talking about, you know, Israel or Jews, I don't even know what a Jew is anymore. I know there are people that follow the Talmud. I know there are people that follow the Torah. I know there are good people out there, individuals, and I know that there are people that people call them Jews. I know there are Judeans, I know there are Ethiopians, I know there are Ashkenazi, I know there's Sephardic. I know there are people who love God and they follow the path and they love the Torah and they hate this bullshit. Am I to condemn them? No. Because they love like I love and they see what I see. And they're people who are obedient in Islam and they pray five times a day and they're not blowing themselves up and they're, 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 they're not they're not falling for the bullshit they're being obedient 
they know what they're going to tell God when the day comes. And there are Christians who understand truly what is being said. And they go beyond the televangelists. They, they, they are people that are doing the work in every, work, in, in every walk of life, of every religion. And these are the people that have chosen God. And because they have chosen God, God has chosen them. God does not choose groups. God chooses individuals. And God can only choose individuals that choose him because technically God chose everybody. But everybody didn't show up for the fucking party. So the people that showed up to the party are the ones that get it. They get it all. But where do you show up for the party? You show up within. And I don't care what your religion is, and God doesn't care what your religion is either. And if you're using religion to fuck over other people, well, God got a pill for that. Be excellent to each other. That's all you got to do. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord God Almighty with all thy heart and soul, thy mind and strength. Why? Because he is you. And if you can do that, you're loving yourself. And if you can do that, you see everybody else in you, and you see you in them. And you see you and every member of the Galactic Federation that's in those ships up there. You see you in those beautiful, intelligent ships up there that are evolving also. And you see you in those planets and those stars and those nebulas and those galaxies and those other universes all the way back to the Paradise Isle. And you see you. And you see you in the Elohim, the wing makers. And they told you, we are you. And they all will tell you, we are you. Why can't you see that you were them too? Why can't you see that this is all one thing? Why can't you see that there's only one of us here? It's okay to enjoy your life. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to be with other people and enjoy, and forgive me for saying this, enjoy the perception of being with others. It's a good thing. That's the way God intended it to be. Okay? We're company. We're good company. We're good company for God, and God is good company for us, and none of us are alone. We are with each other, and the more we love each other, the more we love God, and the more we love God, the more we love each other. We are never alone. We are in each other. God walks in us. We walk in God. We are each other. You have to live your life according to that definition of yourself. You want to hear God? Believe it. Believe that's what you are. No, that's what you are. You are created by God in the image of God. How? Through consciousness. God thinks. We're trying to tell people now, God thinks, why don't you? No thinking below this line. Think. <laughs> yeah, I got that from Less Visible. I love Less Visible. <laughs> I want to make a t-shirt with a line across the heart that says, no thinking below this line. <laughs> Nobody buys my t-shirt. They're scared of them. I made t-shirts. No, I made t-shirts with energetic designs that were guaranteed to help in these matters. But they're weird to other people. I tried to make something more palpable to the mass. And, you know, I can't help the price. I'm doing it through Zazzle. I ain't got no factory. I, gave, I, I you know... Whatever. I'm, 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 I'm leaving it up to the boss on this one. I'm, I'm done. I got nothing. <laughs> Whatever happens to me, happens to me. I, all I want is for people to see themselves as they truly are. Screw me. I'm here. I'm gone. I'm here. I stay. It doesn't matter. But you guys have got to start realizing that you are the more you already want to be. But you're not practicing. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. How do you get to perfection? Practice, practice, practice. How do you get to higher consciousness? Practice, practice, practice. And there are an infinite number of ways to get there. 
I mean, it's okay to join groups. It's okay to do this and learn that and, and Kabbalah and yoga and, and Tao or whatever it is that you've been made to do. You will find it, but you have to want it. And I know you're saying, but I want it. Okay, sit down, relax, breathe deep. It's in you. This is just one life. You can do it. You've been through so many others. You can do this one. Don't worry about the bullshit, okay? If you just take care of your own damn self, the bullshit will work out. If more people take care of themselves and stop the bullshit within themselves, there'll be less bullshit, okay? You can't shovel the bullshit out of the world until you shovel the bullshit out of yourself. This is our job, get rid of the bullshit. We have swallowed enough shit. It is time to regurgitate. It is time to shit out the shit. <laughs> there you go with that poetry again. <laughs> oh, hey, come on, look at it. Basically, we've been at the mercy of a bunch of dark, evil, psychotic people that have basically told us for how many thousands of years, eat shit, okay? We've eaten enough shit. I ain't eating shit no more. I'm not. I don't care about your shit. I am a seashell on the shore through which the breath of God blow. Okay, ain't no shit in there. <laughs> okay, whatever happens to me, I am in the hands of God. As long as I am in the hands of God, I have nothing to fear. I don't even have the fear of fear itself because fear is an illusion. It doesn't exist. Unless I create it, I have nothing to fear. Nobody has anything to fear except they fear it. They create their own fear. You learn to experience that the shit you feared was just shit. And there's no reason to fear shit. It just lays there stinking. But... We get filled up with all kinds of things because they filled us up with it. They fill it up with us through the TV and education and pharmacy and all the stuff that we've been complaining about. That's the shit. The money, the, 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 the central banking, Federal Reserve, that's the shit. Okay. And we have to figure out how to get this shit out of us. And we do the best we can. Now, maybe we can get rid of all of it. Maybe we can. I still got shit in me. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay but at least I'm trying I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to get there myself if I can get there myself then maybe somebody else will see and they will find a way for themselves nobody has to walk a path behind me but at least they can see a path can be made and whose path am I following Okay, Christ, Michael, Layton, and Isu came together as one and gave us a perfect path. Then what happened? I got a religion where everybody is stuck on the cross. Nobody looks at the cup. What is the most important thing it, to me, to me personally, to me? This is just me. I don't know if anybody agrees with me. But the most important moment of that, of that whole bestowal was the cup. He didn't have to do that shit. He really didn't have to do that shit. He could have he, he said, well, you know, Dad, I think I'll go in another direction. He didn't do that. He said, okay, let me get this straight. They're going to take me. They're going to march me around. They're going to beat the shit out of me. They're going to whip me. They're going to put a... They're going to spit on me and beat me some more and make me carry this heavy-ass motherfucker. And then they're going to put this shit on my head and I'm going to bleed some more. And then they're going to nail me on this son of a bitch. And I'm going to be up there. How long? Okay. That's what you want? Uh, okay. Mind telling me why? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, well, you know what, Dad? Father knows best. Your will be done. 
Not much. Now, if he could do that, knowing what's coming, who the fuck are we to complain about the little bullshit that we go through? You try hanging your ass on the cross for nine hours and see how you feel at the end of the day. And we're bitching about the shit we're bitching about. And this cat came and showed us every motherfucking thing we needed to know. In style. And we can't even drink the little cup that's being offered to us. However sweet or bitter, sweet or bitter it is. That's our cup. Drink it. Your cup. Drink it. Do God's will. What else is there? I'm trying my best, man. I, I, what, I don't know what's going to happen. I, 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 you know, <laughs> I want the best. I, 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 whatever God wants, man, that's all I want. Whatever he's got for me, I, I take it. Because that's what he wants. He made me. How can I say no? He's everything to me. How can I say no? He has loved me. He is the most adorable one. He is the magnanimous one. He is the one who will give me everything if I can just get with the program and follow the He's just everything. I, I'm going to say no. Whatever I have to go through, I'll fuck how I feel about it. I'll try to feel better about it. At least get over that, huh? But we're also worried about the shit that we go through. Why? All the shit we go through is the shit we go through because that's the shit we're supposed to go through for reasons that are beyond us. And when we find out, we'll go, oh, okay. I get it. Cool. What's next? Do God's will. How do you find God's will? The kingdom of God is within you. The will of God is within you. You were created by the will of God. The will of God is inherent within your core system. Find your core system. You are the operator of an operative device called a human body. Be the operator. Don't be the body. Be the consciousness within you. All things are found there. The whole of creation is found within you. But you got to want it, man. You got to understand it for what it is. And the things you don't understand, ask about and accept the will of God. All things come in divine time. You will never be left alone. Your ass won't be left hanging. You will do what you have to do. You will do what it's made for you to do. But if you resist and fight and struggle, it's just going to be that much harder for you because there's no way around it. What was the, what was the prophet who didn't want to go and ended up swallowed by a whale? Oh, gee. That, Jeremiah? Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, he tried. He tried to get out. Look what happened to him. And he was working. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was on the job. He tried to get out the building. No. <laughs> you're gonna, if you're going to take the job, do the job. If you don't want the job, say so. Don't want to do the work, say so. Live life as best you can, but at least love each other. Be excellent to each other. But if you want the upgrades, you want the promotion, you want to get ahead in the old divine company, do the work. <laughs> Do the work. The work is within. I'm going to be saying this for the rest of my life until they get it or the new age comes. Do the work. The work is within. You'll get there. Practice, practice, practice. It's a consciousness thing. Dana, practice, practice, practice. It's a consciousness thing. <laughs> Consciousness thing. Da, da, da. Sit your ass down and do your thing. <laughs> Let God give you wings. I can see myself on Sesame Street now. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm digesting here. It's... Uh... I, I'm I'm looking at I'm trying to do what you're suggesting. I'm trying to look at it for God's perspective right now. What you're saying, and look at what the work is, and how many people have been doing the work. You cannot, you cannot make such a leap at once. But I can try. <laughs> here, here, here's the thing. I have asked you in so many words. Let, let, let's say. The great, okay, look at it this way. The great spiral path is a path that winds around a seemingly infinitely high mountain. The mountain is so huge that while you're on the path, the path looks straight. That's just how big the mountain is. But actually, you're walking a curve. That's okay. Not everybody sees it. Some people do. What I am asking you to do is understand what's at the top of the mountain. If in your consciousness, and, and, and I understand this is a tricky thing, but it can be done. There is a world of experience before you of people who are on the path ahead of you and who have made it to the top of the mountain. There are people who are doing this even now. Their energy is the same energy that lies within all energy, which is one thing which is everywhere. It is possible for you to take your consciousness and move outward with it. Think outside the box. Think beyond yourself as a flesh and blood creature. Think beyond this planet in the universe and the solar system and this galaxy and this universe into the super universe. Send yourself like a phone call until you get an answer. You can't just jump into Papa's lap and say, here, well, some people can. But even then, they've had years of experience in finding themselves able to do that. And, and, and some of them don't even know how they did it. I want you to know how you did it. Here's the thing. God reaches out to you with both hands. If you could just reach one hand back, he'd grab it. He'll meet you halfway. Now, here's the fun part. While you're doing all that inner work and reaching within, take your consciousness and realize that everything that you see outside of you is also within you. That whole universe thing is also inside of you. So inside your consciousness, travel travel all over, see yourself heading to God inside yourself, the infinity of your consciousness inside yourself, however you see that to be. Do the work, travel, fly, go, talk, learn. It's a consciousness thing. I'm not asking you to astral project. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is use a little imagination to support your divinity. This is all you have to do. I've written on the blog just, hey, if you just put yourself in an endless field of light and then see yourself off in the distance and then become that self that you see off in the distance and then where you were, you weren't there anymore. You're here now. And that one really got a lot of people. <laughs> I didn't. No, really. They were like, what about you? Know, <laughs> I know some of them got it. I, I, I kind of stopped short because I, because I realized that the next step was, that, okay, now see yourself as several people. <laughs> see yourself as several people all at once. And from there, you can create a whole population. Wow. I got, yo, yeah, I got one for Brian. Brian, Brian is, oh, he just, he just grew in leaps and bounds. He sent me stuff. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm imagining right now a population of chemos. <laughs> you create, I mean, basically all you're doing is practicing your job before you get there. If you can see yourself traveling to God as you see God, okay, and then realizing God is traveling to you, you, you find a place to meet, and this is all inside. This is why I told people, make an offer. Make a living space inside of yourself and deal with it from there. 
And then I got this whole treehouse island thing, and it, it just, it's, oh, it, 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 it evolves. It's a living thing. I've got, you know, I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. And this is this this is this is something as far as I'm concerned that everybody can do. You make a little space. You got an island Create. with a treehouse, right? Yeah. You created that space, right? Yeah. Okay. I've actually had people come to visit. And that's your like base of operations in your in your in your inner mind. Well, it started off as a space of operation. Uh, um. And kind of became. I didn't. The thing that freaked me out. It was. It, it ended up being more. Right. Than I thought of. Right. And basically, what I've come to understand is that this is something that already existed. I just reconnected with it. Right. Okay. So basically, all I did was uh, find home. And I can, I can communicate from there better than I can communicate anywhere. But that's within. If you create a space that is specifically made for your relationship with the divine, um, I, I think I started off telling them, if you're going to do the work, make an office. But you can make a home. You can, you can make an energetic living space inside your consciousness that is specifically for your relationship with Papa and Christ Michael Eitan and any other personality or divine celestial being that you want to have a relationship with. Since all is consciousness, then this will give them a better opportunity and a means to relate to you on a more mutual level. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but this is up to you. It's an individual thing. It is part and parcel of who and what you are. It is made through your personality. So whether you make a closet or a planet or an island or a ship the big as the sun, it doesn't matter. You can fill it up with whatever, but it's your responsibility. You have to keep up with it. You have to maintain it. You created it. It's your responsibility. The beings that you created are real, and I know what you're thinking, but they're just in my mind, huh? <laughs> everything you created was real everything you're creating is real it's just now you're doing it on a higher energetic level this is not like the bullshit that you make on a material plane you, know, you do something that's a cause and effect and then it comes back and it bites you in the ass why did I do that now you owe $500 for something you had no idea about or something whatever you know this is why we go through the shit we go through no I want you to make something on a higher plane, which is within yourself. I want you to raise yourself up to a place within yourself that you know is built specifically for God to come and talk to you, for Christ Michael Eitan to come and talk to you, for Isu and Nada and Nevedonia and Metatron and Majestan and Saraya, the Elohim, or anybody else that you want to get in contact with. That's your couch, that's your TV, that's your living space, that's your living room, that's your headquarters. You do that. And you have the power to do that because that is in your consciousness. And your consciousness is the same consciousness that comes from God, that God put in you as part of his consciousness. You walk in each other. You do that. That is your space. And you work with that. And you do the work there. And they will come to you and you will have those conversations and you will learn and you will practice and you will get it right. And you won't need anybody to tell you any motherfucking thing because you will be getting it straight from God's mouth. You will be getting it from the unicorn's horn. Okay. I got a cave. I got a cave in the side of a mountain. I already made one. Mine's awesome. And I, I look out at this vista of such beauty and I, inside this cave I got it all set up how I like it it's comfy okay yeah yeah it's really good I like I like I like my spot <laughs> it's high up too it's real nice so when you sit down to do the work inside yourself and consciousness that's where you go you want to talk to God that's where you meet him you personalize it yeah 
See? We personalize anybody, it, yeah. Yeah, anybody can do it. We used to do this as children. We used our imagination. We were creative. And then the cabal said, oh, shit, they're being creative. And the first thing we knew, creativity was being taken out of the educational system. Right. Okay, like I said, that's why I love anime. Anime is pure imagination and creation. I mean, anything the human mind can imagine, you can put on film. Yeah. For better, for worse, for good or evil, it's all there. And I'm, I am amazed at the things I find. And, and I know people say, well, TV is run by the cabal. I know that, but I still get a lot out of it. I'm, I'm studying it. I've always been fascinated with TV because I see it... I, I see it as a means of good and evil. Uh, I can pick diamonds out of shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's, that's an important time. I mean, that's what you need to do right now, right? If you look around, if you decide to see it like that, you can see that there's a lot of bad stuff going on, but that there's pearls of wisdom in there, or diamonds if you prefer. You know, you just yeah. got to know what you're looking for. And uh, having said that, uh, Kibo... Um, we're coming up to the end of the second hour. You know, we could keep going. I, I, I got to, but we gotta, we, we gotta do this in doses. You know, this is like medicine, so we gotta, we gotta do this in, in, uh, inch by inch. So I wanna, I wanna ask you, say, uh, as much as you can in the, in the next five or so minutes. But you mentioned uh, in some of your writings, whether it be on your blog or the, the contributions you make. Uh, wherever you make them about examination time i mean this this time you know even if you you're half aware of what's really going down right now there's so much to be aware of and to take in we really are on the cusp or like on the cliff's edge you know some might even suggest we're already falling in a sense you know we're we're moving into a a new chapter what we, what what should we really we, do we do we focus on what's going on around us i mean there's a lot to take in or we just go straight straight to the inner work. We just ignore it, and we get down to the nitty gritty uh, on the inside. You, is that your examination? What is this examination? You know, is that is that is that this time? How, how aware can you be of everything? You ignore nothing. You have to be aware of what's around you. You have to be aware of what's within you. You have to be able to balance the relationship because what is within you creates what is around you. What we are dealing with around us is a mass creation. However much has been manipulated, we let that manipulation happen because we were weak and stupid and half asleep and full of sleep. What did the guy say? I didn't know. Nobody told me. I wasn't there. And if I was there, I was asleep. Yeah. So you can ignore nothing. The problem is now we are at a stage where we are paying more attention to what is around us than what is within us, and that is a mistake. We have to pay attention to what is within us, not to the extent where we ignore what is around us. That is a huge mistake. That is part of the problem. You know, like the new age thing, oh, that's just so negative. That doesn't resonate with me. I don't want anything. <laughs> I hate that. You know, okay, so basically what you're telling me is I can come up to you every day and slap the shit out of you, and you just ignore it. <laughs> because that's what's happening. Yeah. Basically, we got we got a small group of people, whoever they are, wherever they come from, because as far as I'm concerned, they come from all walks of life, and they call themselves what the hell they call themselves, and I just call them the evil cabal, psychopathic, whatever. But basically what they, come, what they do is they come out every day and... They slap us in the face, laugh, and walk away. Now, either the people on this planet are going to wake up and realize they're being slapped and then decide how they're going to react about it, or the people who think that they're awake and they're going, oh, that poor man, he has problems. I'm going to love him. You know, I can love you and kick your ass, too. <laughs> kick your ass with all the love in my heart. Is that what <laughs> But I'm tired of you slapping me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I mean, really? <laughs> Sunshine and lollipops and <laughs> horses. 
Beat me, baby. Beat me, please. Oh, okay. Uh, no. No. You got to be aware. Next time he comes, at least duck. Yeah. Okay, I understand you don't want to hit him back. I understand you love him. You don't want to cause anybody any pain. I don't want to cause anybody any pain either. I'm a terrible fighter. If I got into a physical fight, I'd probably get my ass whooped. If you make me really mad and I snap and get all evil on your ass, I'll just buy a 9 millimeter long shot with a scope and wait six months for you to fuck with somebody else and then shoot you and they'll blame it on somebody else. But I don't want to go <laughs> Okay, I'm, that's not, I don't want to do that. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. That's not good. Okay, but uh, what do they say? I do realize that's an option. <laughs> okay, and and uh, I don't know. I I think some people just leave me alone because they think I'm crazy. No, 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 really. I I I think you know if people look at well, he's cool, man. I don't think you really want to fuck with him because he'll get it. <laughs> You know, shoot your ass six months later. <laughs> and I, you know, I pick up flies and, and, and insects and, you know, let them out the house. I don't want to hurt anybody. No. I love, I, I, I love everybody. I don't want to do harm to anything. And, you know, and forgive me, Lord. I, I, I still have problems with myself. You know, it's like, well, yes, I, I eat meat. I love a good bacon cheeseburger, I know. <laughs> That's myself. I, I, you know, I do apologize. And I do hope <laughs> okay, maybe, no, really. You know, I have to think about shit like that. I'm smoking tobacco and drinking RC. And, you know, <laughs> I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. And I don't like the drugs. Even the, the weed ain't natural anymore. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't get a job nowadays unless you do. Now, I still have to deal with the system. And uh, I'm trying to duck when he swings at me. Every once in a while, I put an arm up and go, don't do that. Yeah. And, but uh, I'm aware. I know the little motherfucker. I know short Lucy's there waiting to slap my ass. Yeah. So basically... Right now, I'm just, you know, laughing. And laughing and ducking is best I can. <laughs> and, you know, if they tag me, well, that's all right. It didn't hurt too much because I know what's coming for you. So you keep that up because you about to get gang banged on your ass real soon. Yeah. So uh, laugh while you can. I'm laughing too. We're just not laughing for the same reasons. No. Um. I don't know what that does for me, you know. I'm I'm, I'm still waiting for the NATO SWAT team to show up at my door. Uh, <laughs> no, come on, man. No, I don't. Uh, I, I don't put it. I, you ask what reality is. I don't put anything past anybody for anything anymore. Okay, I know I'm dealing with a bunch of psychotic evil fucks who will do anything they want as long as they think they can get away with it. And my only protection is God. And the only reason that a hell of a lot of shit ain't happened to me is because of God. And I'm grateful for that. And I am trying my best to stay in this good grace because I got nothing. Okay? I got nothing. I got no power to defend myself against any of this shit. Were it not for God, I would not be here. I am only here because God thinks of me. Yeah, my 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 whole desire in life is to have God think as well of me as I possibly can. I want to be on His good side so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, that's all I want. If I if I'm on God's good side, I'm I'm cool. Okay, if he's my best friend, and I know if he's standing right with me, or next to me, or behind me, or in front of me, that little motherfucker ain't ever gonna come up and slap me again. It really because seems- he sees. Hey, he sees what I got. So that's it. I think I think that's a good point that you make, and I think the reality the reality of it is that we have not got nothing if we don't have the one who created us. Because right now, 
we need him more than ever. We think we kind of maybe needed him, you know, a little bit here and there occasionally, but right now, right now, we 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 need him, and he's all we got, really. Well, see, here's the thing. He can only be with us as much as we let him be. Right. Okay, so we can only be with him as much as we let ourselves be. Right. And this is why it is so important to go within and do the work. And I keep saying, it's only one of us here. Recognize that. Give the guy his props. Okay, and start acting like you're supposed to act. What else can you do? That's it. Now, Kibo, I, uh, I, I, gee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this uh, second hour to a close. We gotta, we gotta finish this second hour. This hour is going longer than an hour should go. But uh, you know, <laughs> there's just so much to be said. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, on in official terms, I'm gonna call this, uh, this meeting to a close at the, at this time. Thank you very much for this, uh, for this. Uh, time you spent with me Kibo it's you know I'm sure a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this conversation because there's a lot of um, there's a lot to be said about these times and so a lot of us are sharing the same experiences of feeling the same things and it's nice to elucidate them uh, for each other you know can can I say thank you <laughs> yes <'Cause>, <laughs> you know this is going out to AH and I, I want to thank the people that have helped me grow and have gotten me this far because you guys don't really understand what you've done for me. Okay, I mean, if it weren't for Candace and Jess and Hazel and Eve and 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 <laughs> oh God, too many people. You know, I'm learning from everybody here. I'm taking what you're putting out, and I'm using it. I am. I'm using it. Okay, all of you are helping me grow, and I appreciate that. And uh, we're in this together, and there's a reason we're here. And I know I don't always post, you know, and you know I don't do the happy birthday thing. And, and, <laughs> and, and people, you know, people put up, people put up posts for help for this or that, and I give it to them. I just don't post it, but I want you guys to know I'm there for you. I love you. I am your brother. Okay, okay. I am with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, <laughs> All right, just well, think. No, no, that's good. And, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're there for you too, man. And, you know, thank you so much for spending all this time today. Uh, you, we think we might convince you to, to do it again uh, sometime soon. Oh, well, you know, whenever, <laughs> you, whenever you feel the need, I guess. I mean, <laughs> okay. that's what I'm here for, I reckon. I'll take that as a yes, and I'll keep, I'll, I'll I'll hold you to that. <laughs> but uh, okay, folks. Well, Kibo, thank you, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna press the I'm gonna press the pause button on this uh, on this recorder. Uh, but uh, folks, this has been uh, this has been a fantastic experience. I'm so glad. This is Kibo coming at you with Benjamin again. This is for AH and everyone who listens to it. We hope you find this useful and interesting and worth a listen. And uh, We'll see you real soon on the other side. Peace oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, God goes with you. <laughs> so it is. Okay. Thank you. All right.